detonating any nuclear bomb today would be devastating, not only to those affected within the blast radius, but to global civilization as we know it. But what are these effects and what would actually happen if a nuclear weapon was used? Let's find out in this video. Let's first roll back to 1945 and the completion of the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project was a nuclear research and experimental program spearheaded by the United States and led by General Leslie Groves of the US Army Corps of Engineers. And this was in order to create the world's first nuclear weapon slash weapons and the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, Professor Robert Oppenheimer, was the man in charge of the successful first design of an atomic bomb after his design would be developed and actually used in practice against the Japanese at the end of World War II, Oppenheimer would go on to quote a phrase from the Bhagavad Gita on nuclear weapons. I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, which in no other way truly sums up the power and terrifying nature of the nuclear bomb. In order to look at the immediate effects of what would happen if a nuclear bomb went off, then we must use the two infamous historical uses of nuclear weapons on the Japanese cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima by the United States military. Two different types of atomic bombs were used, one for each city, one named Little Boy bound for Hiroshima and a Fat Man which was bound for Nagasaki and these were used in the attack on the 6th and the 9th of August 1945 respectively. The Little Boy nuclear warhead was detonated approximately 2,000 feet over the city of Hiroshima with a comparative energy to that of 15,000 tons of TNT and of course the result was devastating. The cause of this devastation can be simplified into three main components which include the physical blast, the fire caused and the radiation produced. The physical blast of the bomb totaled everything within a one mile radius beneath that of the detonation or ground zero and this was due to the pressure wave that is formed when the bomb goes off pushing out a wave of air that totally rips apart buildings, people, anything that gets in its way. Way. The pressure wave was almost immediately followed by a fireball that was over 380 meters in diameter and the heat from this fireball was estimated at approximately 6,000 degrees centigrade which is about the surface temperature of the sun. As the fireball raged, it sucked in the surrounding air, which transformed the fireball into a large fire storm that covered almost the entire area of that initial pressure wave that we've just mentioned. And it was estimated by scientists from the Manhattan Project that 60% of the immediate deaths were due to this firestorm and fireball. Furthermore, neutron and gamma radiation created by the detonation showered down over the city itself and meant that anyone within a one mile radius of the initial detonation would have died from a fatal dose of radiation poisoning. Various sources estimate that 66,000 Japanese civilians and soldiers alike were indiscriminately killed directly after the initial blast and then further to this 69 to 75,000 people were injured as a result of the blast in the coming minutes and hours after. The scale and statistics from the slightly more powerful Fat Man warhead over Nagasaki were of a similar nature. The newfound power, whether good or bad, of these new weapons now displayed on the world stage created a surge in investment into nuclear weapon programs globally with the United States and the former Soviet Union, now Russia, becoming the leading powers in the nuclear field and nuclear weapon programs, having an estimated 11,000 nuclear missiles between both the US and Russia currently to scale, that is at least one nuclear 
nuclear missile for every single city in the entire world. Furthermore, in the 75 plus years since the last use of nuclear weapons, they have dramatically advanced in both power and deployment capabilities. It was because of this investment into the nuclear research that typical modern warheads produced by the United States have a yield of approximately 1.2 megatons of TNT. In comparison, that's approximately 80 times more powerful than that of the ones used against Nagasaki and Hiroshima. If we were to take the average death toll from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki explosions and expand that to just the US and Russian nuclear arsenal if they were used at once, that would equal nearly 800 million fatalities across the entirety of the world from direct impact. Remember that the modern equivalents are far more powerful and would likely have a greater death toll. In addition to this, if all of these nuclear bombs were to go off in a short period, the nuclear fallout would bring block out the light from the sun due to the clouds of ash and nuclear debris, and this would result in a massive plummet, if not total crop yield failures globally, resulting in famine, disease, rioting, and ultimately an end to modern standards of living for at least the foreseeable future. If you think that's bad, that's not all. If we compare these modern nuclear weapons to the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created, the Tsar Bomber, created and tested in 1961, which claimed to have a power close or equal to 50 megatons of TNT, approximately 40 times more powerful than that of the generic modern nuclear warheads in the present day. What does that actually mean? Well, for example, during the test of the bomb itself, by the Soviet Union, just the flare could be seen from the naked eye over 1,000 kilometers away, which is a quarter of the distance between the UK and the US. If the bomb were to explode, you'd be able to see it. If you thought that the fireball produced by the bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki was unbelievable, the fireball from the Tsar bomb would engulf half of New York City. The cloud produced would span over 500 miles and the shockwave produced by the detonation circled the world three times over. The average speed of this shockwave on its first pass around the world was equal to just over 300 meters a second. Windows for up to 900 kilometers away were broken by the shockwave and as for the radiation produced, it was actually surprisingly low and people visited the test site just two hours after the detonation and had no serious immediate adverse effect. This video has focused on the immediate effects of said nuclear explosions and hopefully in a future video we will be looking at the long-term effects of nuclear weapons and if a nuclear winter was to fall into line. Using this as an example of what a nuclear bomb can actually do highlights how much of a danger these weapons can be. However, the most important danger present by the use of these weapons is the theory of mutually assured destruction and pressing the button. Hopefully none of you want to press that button, but if you do want to press one button, then I would be very, very appreciative if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And of course, we'll carry on with this video. What is mutually assured destruction? It's the idea that if one nuclear weapon gets fired, other nuclear nations will return the bombs back to the instigator and thus leading to a mass of warheads detonating on the planet and creating a scenario where nobody wins and the future of humanity ends. The MAD protocol is in itself a very risky scenario for humanity. Do you want to eliminate the human race over one nation's nuclear decision or do you accept your unfortunate fate? and hope humanity still survives by not retaliating to reduce the nuclear threat. It's a question that creates polar opposite reactions and as such I'd love to see your thoughts on this issue and if you enjoyed this episode of History by Numbers look out for the upcoming episode on the scale of the military industrial complexes of the most advanced nations of the world. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.